Right, so welcome to part seven. I believe this is where I left it at the last part. Uh, the outside was finished rendered and dry. So we're going to get that painted this week. And the inside, I believe we left that and it was plastered. That is also painted this week. Also going to do a bit of the internal trim work. So on Tuesday, I give the walls on the inside a very watery white 10% uh, water mixed into the paint mix. And then I shot off to work, left the wife instructions to give it a uh, top coat undercoat white. This is by Crown. And the outside, well, we done most of that on Monday. Finished that very early Tuesday morning. That's at about four cups. Now, onto a question I had in the comments about getting hot with this sort of roof. Not really, because this is north facing. You can see there, the sun only just hits the floor. It does light up all that wall, but not the floor. So, this is August. And there you are, you can just see the line there. It's half past one in the afternoon, won't be getting any more sun in depth into the conservatory. So even in July, it never went above 31, even when the outside temperature was hotter. So it's 31 centigrade was the most it got to. This should self-regulate. There's the foreman just clearing up down the side. Obviously, I can't get in there anymore. Not with, you know, I'm on there seven months pregnant and uh, I just can't squeeze past a pier in that wall. So now on to the next challenge. This beam across the top has got a gap of about an inch between the polycarbonate and the wood. So we're going to fill that with a little bit of polystyrene, which we will cut into strips from this board. Nice and easy. I'll get my assistant just to steady it on the table so that I can cut through my own fingers while trimming it down to salt. This should act as an excellent draft excluder. I don't want to use expanding foam because it will bond the polycarbonate to the beam and not let it flex in the heat and the coolness of the winter. Obviously, we do every gap as this insulates nicely and stops drafts. You don't get this with normal conservatory fitters. Anyone that don't like my method of working, leave a comment if you want, but I've only got one thing to say to you. Okay, I'm just finishing nailing up the last bit of this plastic. This is just a bit of 90mm uh, architrave board, just to finish off and space that wood out right. For this bit, now, this bit's going to run the full length, but I've got to cut it down as it is half an inch too big. So we've got to cut half an inch off all the way down the five metres. This only lasts about three minutes. Right, 10 minutes later, nice blue sky again. Now I've pinned this board up temporarily. I've only used two nails, only put them in a tiny little bit. So it's up there, it's in the right place and now I'm marking all those top beams that are holding the polycarbonate and I'm marking the underneath upright wooden beams so that I can nibble all these bits out with the jigsaw and then this will go back on and fit absolutely perfectly. I'll get my cameraman here just to come in a bit closer and show you what I'm doing. I'm measuring with that green spacer. 
I've already marked off the depth of the wood and I'm transferring it onto the bottom of the plastic board. I find by putting the whole board in place and then marking it like this, it's easier than measuring or anything. And marking everything at once means everything will be cut when the board's in the same position. Right, to save your jigsaw marking your plastic board, put tape across the bottom of the jigsaw. This, unfortunately, is a cheaply old replacement for my one that seems to have died after 20 years use. It might just need new brushes. I'll investigate that in the future. Also, unfortunately, this one hasn't got a speed control on the trigger. So I'm having to go on off. little bit of 180 grit sandpaper there just to smooth the edges off. Using brilliant teamwork there we've got everything cut out. This board had to be supported because of its length because once you start cutting out of that lip it does weaken it. Right, we've got the board up and in place. You can see it fits lovely. Wife's there just cleaning that off. Now, we have been told that we haven't got enough of these shots in our videos. This is a building video. Therefore, it should have some of them shots. Right, back to the building. Got to fill that little gap in the corner because the board was 20 centimetres too short. On now to seal the uh, board between the top of it and the roof. Get rid of the horrible gap that was there. Unfortunately, I do not like the way the silicon has finished. Even though I've masking taped it up, I don't like the finish. I'm thinking maybe we could add another bit of trim afterwards to hide up the silicon. Let me know what you think. Is it important? Am I going a bit OCD-ish? Look, the trim does look good, doesn't it? That trim? Let me know. And here's the silicon with no trim over it. What do you think? Okay, while it's still daylight, I'm going to give you a shot of the outside look finished. And the side bit there, that's that. And then I'm going to go back inside and all these bits of wood you can see up the sides of the windows, I'm going to start on these. So we'll start on this one in the corner and make this corner piece of wood disappear. Measure it, cut it, stick it on. I'm using this Fix All by Sudal. It's bloody good stuff. And I have only just a day invested in a work light so I can work in the dark. This is my second tube on the entire conservatory. Take off the nozzle that comes with it. Don't use that. Use the old one from the other tube. Otherwise, eventually, when you've used 20 tubes, you've wasted a whole tube in those nozzles. And silicon guns. This is a 20 quid silicon gun from Screwfix 15 years ago. Still going strong. You get what you pay for. Make sure you stick the cap back on the end of the nozzle so it doesn't dry out in between usage. Right, now I'm sticking on 20mm architrave beads, pushing them right up close to the window frame so that I get a lovely bit of spacing on there. Do the same on the other side. That buries it right up to the window frame and then we've just got the corner exposed, which will be getting a lovely 90 degree angle bit. Now this stuff's about seven quid a tube and I think it's so good you could actually stick stuff on upside down. So I'm going to give it another bead down here ready for the angle to go over the top and uh, it is instant grab 
job done once you stuck it on with this stuff. Now, take you back quickly to what it looked like before. What a mess, white and wood and shit everywhere. And how much better it looks now. Although, it does still need a little bit of silicon around the edges. So, this is it look, already taped up. I've got a couple of silicon lines there to do at the edges. We'll just run a bead of silicon down each side. Don't go for none of them fancy tools, just use my finger. My finger's absolutely perfect for that. Couple of passes on each side with your finger, make sure there's not too much of an excess on there. And it's time to pull the tape off. Always pull the tape off away from the silicon at a bit of an angle. Gives you a much, much better finish. There you go. Now that is actually better than a factory finish because I used masking tape. None of them rubbishy freehand silicon joints for me. And I've done all the rest as well. Tomorrow these will be getting the angle uh, caps on. And then I'm just waiting for a delivery of plastic so I can finish the front of the woods off. And here's the other corner all nice and finished. Look at that. Oh, I've got about a week and a bit's worth of work here in between my own job and it should all be finished. So please come back next week to see how things are going. Okay, I'm going to say bye for now and uh, see you on part eight.